The city of Greensboro has a new basketball team. We'll give you all the details about the Swarm. North Carolina A&T State University's women's basketball team just completed, uh, competed in the NCAA tournament. A few members of the team will join us to share their experience. And you know, it takes money to fund an athletic department. We'll visit with the executive director of the Aggie Athletic Foundation. Those are topics on today's Triad Perspectives. Welcome to Triad Perspectives. I'm your host, Sandra Hughes. North Carolina A&T State University's athletics has enjoyed an extremely successful year, led by the football team's bowl win and the women's basketball team's NCAA appearance. Now, there are a lot of factors that go into building a champion, and one of them is money. Today, I'm joined by Ms. Jennifer Williams, who is the executive director of the Aggie Athletic Foundation. Jennifer, welcome. Good to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having so me. So do we have plenty of money? We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> but this certainly is a big part, isn't it? Yes. Um, money, you know, it helps with recruitment, which, you know, if you have money, you can get some of the best talent. It also helps with facilities and then just providing our student athletes with the best experience possible. Tell us about the Aggie Athletic Foundation because it's fairly new. Yes. Um, the Aggie Athletic Foundation, um, it, the inception began in uh, 2011. We are the official fundraising arm for NCA and T Athletics. Our primary goal is to provide the department with uh, financial support. Are you having good luck with that? Is it a struggle? How's um, it going? You know, asking for money can always can, can be challenging, but our donors, our alumni, our friends, they've stepped up to the plate. For the past two years, we've We've raised um, over $500,000. In four years, we've supplied the athletic department with $1.5 million. So we're trending in the right direction. There were two clubs before mm -hmm. AAF. Tell me about those. Um, well, prior to the AAF, there was the um, Aggie Club and then the Victory Club. You know, in best practices, it's best to only have one booster organization. So it was decided to combine those two clubs, and that's how the Aggie Athletic Foundation was formed. Are you liking what you see in that? Yes, we have become a model organization. We were asked to present at CASE, um, which is the, the Council for Advancement, and it's an overall university advancement. They asked us to talk about best practices. We were on a panel with Texas Tech, some of your bigger universities, and just talking about our success. Okay, you have been with the AAF for what? It'll be four, four years in four July. Years. So anything in particular you want to point out that has happened since you've been there? Since when I started, we had about 400 donors. We are now almost at 800 donors. We are growing, and I think people see the success. They see the impact that we're having on the student athletes, on the department, and they want to be a part of our team. Of course. I mean, that's, that sounds wonderful. So how do people get involved with well, your club? Um, there are a lot of ways. You can, um, you can call me. Um, you can um, visit they can us. Call on, me. Yeah, they can call. Yes, uh, Sandra, she's actually one of our former um, board members. So, um, you know, you can uh, visit our website, aggieboosters.com. You can stop by more gym. We're very accessible. And, um, you know, there's, there's always ways to learn about the AAF. We actually have a donor meeting coming up on April 16th before our spring game. And it's for our donors to come and ask us questions, but it's also for prospective members to, to, to learn more about the organization. So let's say someone has $10 mm -hmm. and someone has $10,000. Mm -hmm. Are you just looking for the $10,000 people? No. We say every amount, every bit helps. We don't want to scare people away thinking that they only have to give a 10000 gift or a $5,000 gift. Mm -hmm. We want to appeal to all types of donors, whether it's $10 a month or $1,000 a month. The AAF can work with you to find what best ways you can support the department. And what I like about it is that you haven't broken it up to these people give this amount and these people give another amount. Right. I, I mean, if you give, you're a part of our family. You're a part of our team and we will invite you to things. We will keep you informed with electronic communication. It, we don't, you know, there are certain benefits that are afforded to those who give more, but across the board, you're, we're inclusive of all. That, that's, that's wonderful. And see, that makes people feel good when they don't have a lot of money to right. give. So how are the students directly benefiting from the money that you raise? Well, um, uniforms, equipment, 
being able to travel to certain areas of the country that they may not have been able to go to. Um, just knowing that you have people outside of your coaching staff who support you. Being that sixth or twelfth man, when they do travel to these destinations, th those are all important factors to our student athletes. Is that help you recruit more students? Yes, um, I think in terms of um, just us being able to go to different areas and then getting our brand. You know, with our women's team going to the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. that helps with admissions, applications, with our football team winning the Celebration Bowl. Oh, yeah. You know, that helps with the university as, the whole, as a whole. Athletics is known as the front porch. We are, the, we are the most visible unit, and that just helps drive, you know, whether it's admissions, revenue to the university as a whole when we win. I've never heard it said that way. Front porch, that's pretty <laughs> we cool. We the front porch. Yeah, that's pretty cool, because I, I know a lot of people who don't come to campus just to look around, but they come to the games. Yes, they, they certainly, certainly do. do. Anything upcoming uh, that you want to explain about? Um, well, we did just conclude our um, renewal period. Um, that's in, if you wanted to participate in our football priority purchase period. We do allow for our donors to buy their football season tickets before the general public. So that just ended March 31st. However, you can make a donation anytime throughout the year. Um, we, as I mentioned, we have our donor meeting, which is April 16th. That's just a great event to come and just learn. We have different units on campus presenting. We have our ticket office compliance, just to learn about our department as a whole. Um, we are doing Aggie caravans. I was just in um, Dallas and Houston. Um, we partner with our alumni relations department and university advancement. We want to go out and, and visit with our donors and our alumni. We want to keep them engaged and connected to the university. So that's an um, initiative that we started and it's been very successful. That sounds wonderful because I know donors have a lot of questions, don't they? A lot of questions, especially those that aren't right here in the Greensboro, the Triad area. Um, that's why we thought it was so important to include other representatives of the university on these caravans because people, they want to know about athletics, but they also want to know about the advancement, you know, admission. So it's just nice to be able to go on the road and share what's happening on campus. So what would you be excited to see, let's say five years from now? Five years from now, I would love to be able to fully fund all scholarships um, for the athletic department. Wow. That's about $3 million. I was just gonna yeah. say, that's a lot of money. <laughs> yes, yes, that would be um, one of my goals. And then to annually be able to bring in seven figures from donor revenue only. Those are two goals, and I, I definitely think we can achieve that. How big is the foundation? Um, in terms of membership, yes. um, right now we're at 769. That was the close of 2015. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for us to grow. Um, I would like for us to be at about 870, 850 as we close out 2016. Um, winning helps. So as our teams continue to do too well, people want to be a part of a winning team. They certainly do. I mean, to, to watch and to play. Yes, yeah, exactly. That, that's very good. And you should be proud of what, what you've got going over there now. Thank you. Yes. And thank you very much for coming. Once again, if people want to get in touch with you or want to be a member, want to be a donor, want to just more information, you're the person. Yes, you can call me at 336-285-3066. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, and ask for Jennifer Williams. Yes. Well, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you today. so much. Good to see Good you. To see I you. hope everything works out well for you. Thank you. We'll pause for just a minute, and when we come back, we'll be joined by members of the A&T's MEAC Championship winning women's basketball team. Oh, don't go away. <laughs> this is an A&T Historical Minute, and I am William Robson. The Corbett Sports Center opened December 3, 1978. It is named after LSF Corbett, a 1931 graduate of A&T. Officially known as Mr. A&T, his official title was Sports Information Director. He performed many other roles on campus, including dorm counselor, and he was a member of the board in control of intercollegiate athletics. The three-story complex includes office space, classrooms, and two racquetball courts, in addition to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Corbett also houses many of the human performance and leisure study courses at A&T. The Corbett Sports Center is the current home of the North Carolina A&T men and women's basketball teams and the swimming team. This has been a historical minute, and I am William Robbins. Welcome back to Triad Perspectives. I'm your host, Sandra Hughes. The NCANT women's basketball team just competed and completed one of their most successful seasons in a long time. The Lady Aggies won the MEAC championship and earned a spot in the NCAA tournament for only the third time 
in school history. Isn't that wonderful? Joining me now is the head coach, Terrell Robinson, and two members of the team. This is Dana Brown and also April McRae. Nice to have you all with us very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. And congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about that, coach? I feel good. I feel accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, well, well overdue. overdue. You know, you know we've, we've um, these we young women came here, transferred here from other universities for, for that moment, and we got it. Well, that's good. So, do you do a lot of recruiting, or do people just hear about the program? Recruiting and, you know, relationships. You know, all these young women played, um, grew up together playing AAU together. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear about that, Dana. Um, well, we play on a team called the 76ers, and uh, just playing with her and building that relationship made it that much better to win a championship with her in college. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I never thought I would get to play with Dana in college, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been a great experience. That's good. So, so what, what role, role, what role, what position do you play? I play forward and center. And you? Shooting guard. Okay, all right. So, Coach, is it a lot to do with height, size? It has a lot to do with everything. Oh. You know, you got to have some height, you got to have some size. Got to have some speed, some quickness, some agility. Got to have smarts. So you wouldn't let me be on the team then, I guess, huh? <laughs> no, of course not. Well, tell me about your experience with the tournament. Um, it was a, uh, which, which term? The NCAA? In, in, no, the, the start with the NEAC. The NEAC? Well, you know, we've, again, yeah, going down that road um, a few times and made it to the semifinals, trying to get to the finals. Um, we had done that previously three years consecutively, and, you know, we felt like this is our year. You know, we finished the season, win the regular season, uh, regular season championship. And, you know, our confidence was different. You know, our mindset, our approach. And um, in those situations in the tournament, it's about, you know, young women stepping up. And, you know, these two young women with me, along with a few others, did that, took care of business. So a lot of it is in, is in your mind, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the two years before that, you know, we blew leads to go to the semifinals. And um, it was the other team's momentum changing and us not responding. And this year, we had those same situations, but um, we responded differently. So, Dana, it sounds like you have to have a lot of talents and skills put together. It's not just whether you could shoot the ball or run the ball, right? Tell me about it. Um, with that, you just have to have a mind for the game because a lot of it comes from thinking the game before it actually happens. So, like, for me, I know I'm actually thinking about the game before I actually play the game. And that alone helps you with the skill. Now, are you thinking about your team or the other team? Tell me which one you're talking about. I'm thinking about everything throughout the whole game, a whole 40-minute game. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so how much coaching do you have to do once you get out there in the game? Um, a little. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they're talented. We practice. We pretty much go over everything, everything that we're going to do in the game. And if, if we, we have, have to make adjustments, adjustments which, which we seldom do, do you, you know, we will. will. But um, these, you know, these, you know, these young women do a good job of, you know, the preparation, preparation piece that Dana's talking about, covering all aspects of the game, offense, defense, strategically, how we're going to guard and how we're going to attack people. They do a good job of doing that. Oh, sounds scary to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, April, you are a three-time All-MAC performer, also named Most Outstanding Player in the MAC tournament. Mm -hmm. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. How does that feel? Um, it's an amazing feeling. I know I worked really hard, and to get some recognition for it was just great. Okay. So, so talk about the experience of the MAC tournament. Um, my experience this year. What about your mindset? That's what the coach was just saying. My mindset was a little different this year. I knew it was my senior year. It was my last time. It's not like I had another chance to come back and get the championship. And I just knew I had to go out there and just do whatever I can do to help my team and ultimately win. Well, and, and that's what she did, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now talk about the NCAA. NCAA. Well, it was an experience I had gone as an assistant, assistant coach, coach under Coach Cage Bibbs a few years back. and. Going as a head coach is a little different. You know, you have more ownership and, you know, you're interviewing and talking to different reporters and, you know, and all that stuff. And you're preparing for, you know, at the, you know, number one team in your uh, bracket, which was Notre Dame, you know, which was a, a challenge in itself that, you know, we were, for two days we enjoyed the moment, but then it was right back to business. So, um, but it, it was a good experience. It was a good experience for the returners, obviously the seniors getting it experience that before they got out of here. Okay, it's, to me it sounds like it has to be a little bit, I don't want to say frightening, but you know, to, to get ready to play a Notre Dame. I won't say frightening, you know, we're all competitors, you know, especially the young women on this team. Um, you know, we were up to the challenge and um, obviously, you know, the score didn't 
um, show that, you know, they're a great team in themselves, but we prepared the same and we went about it the same. You know, they just came up on the right end. Feeling pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. I said, tell me about your feelings about the NCAA. For me, it was very intense, but that's what you work for ever since you started playing basketball. That's what I worked for uh, ever since I was four years old to be able to play in that moment. And it's a moment that you don't want to let go, but of course someone had to win. Someone yeah. had to win. So are you going to have to let it go? Now that you're graduating? Yeah, I have, have to let it go. go. I have to go on to bigger and better things. So. Like? Um, hopefully pursuing a career overseas. Mm, okay. I mean, can you still find a way to play basketball? Yeah, I want to um, play basketball overseas professionally. Okay. Why not yeah. here? Um, I just want to go overseas and experience the overseas life. Like, I've been here. I want to go somewhere <laughs> else and see the other cultures and what, what else the world has to offer. Yeah. Do you help them? find places once they leave you? Yeah, yeah, I, I try to guide them um, in the right direction with agents and, you know, places to expose their talent and just hope they make the right decision. At the end of the day, um, they've got to do their part in taking care of their body and performing and all that stuff to increase their value, you know, when they have those opportunities. So you have players coming and going. Uh, what are your expectations for next season? Um, to win a championship oh. every every year. That's what we are striving for. Um, I feel like though we've lost a big group and Christina Carter, April McRae, Adrian and Nazario, um, Courtney Powell, um, we're also, you know, there's an opportunity for our returners to really step up and we got an exciting uh, recruiting class as well. Okay, how many recruiters do you have out there? Uh, we have five recruits coming in. Okay. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah, really good. And we just talked to the lady from the Aggie Athletic Foundation. How much does that mean to you? Oh, man, the, the support of um, our alumni is huge. You know, it uh, benefits us. You know, we're able to, you know, invest in these young women and get them, you know, things that, you know, beyond um, what their scholarship costs may be. So um, we, we appreciate everything that uh, Ms. Williams does in order to keep our alumni involved with our athletics program. That's really important, I'm sure. Absolutely. All right, now, are you going overseas, Dana, to play? Yeah. I have an extra year to yeah. play. <laughs> are you afraid she you won't? Oh, man. Dana is a part of that, <laughs> that big plan next year. No. So are you being, well, I shouldn't ask you that. I'll be here. <laughs> so I don't need to ask you if you're being recruited by anybody else. Okay, she'll be here. All right, you heard her say that, didn't you? <laughs> didn't, does she have to put it in writing or something? I tried her to yeah. too, so we should be good. That's right. Well, I, we are all very proud of the women's basketball team. Uh, as you look forward, what would you like to see more of or, or something else happen with your team? Well, you know, just um, I hope that our fan base grows at our games. Um, we obviously, you know, have non-conference games and we have double headers um, with the men, but um, we, we play an exciting brand of basketball and we just want our fan base to increase. And um, obviously, you know, recruiting, I um, want to be able to continue to try to get these young women from North Carolina, some of the best talent in the state, try to keep them home. Greensboro as well. Okay. Good. And so therefore, Dana, you certainly aren't going anywhere, it sounds like to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So when you, when you get these young ladies in, how much, I, I, I want to use the word control, do you have over what they do in their classes and everything? As much as possible. We do a lot of things to try to uh, make sure that they're managing their time well, um, going to class, you know, going to study hall, make sure they're eating. You know, they're, you know it's not easy for an athlete, you know, having practice and every, all the requirements that, we, that athletics has to, and then they have to share their social and um, academic life. Okay. Well, it sounds like you all have a big job ahead of you, and you too. Yes, yes all, all the time. We'll be asking you what happened. <laughs> oh, congratulating you. That's all for right now. There's a new swarm of professional basketball players descending on Greensboro. We'll tell you all about it in 60 seconds. You're watching Triad Perspectives. the North Carolina and t State University Historical Minute. I'm Marilyn Parker. The Dudley Memorial Building houses more stone applications than any other building on Antis campus. A sweep of 15 stones guide visitors to the main entrance. Built in 1893, the original facility contained a library, an auditorium, and administrative offices.
In 1930, a fire led to a reconstruction and the facility was renamed after A&T's second president, James B. Dudley. Today, the building is home to the Maddie Reed African Heritage and H.C. Taylor Art Galleries, music classrooms, and laboratories. The Dudley Memorial Building is located on the east side of campus, directly behind the statue of the A&T 4 and right across from Dudley Road. The NBA has created a new developmental league and the Charlotte Hornets will operate a team right here in Greensboro. I'm pleased to welcome Steve, Steve Swetoa to our program today. He's president of the new Greensboro Swarm. Congratulations and welcome. Sandra, thank, thank you. you. It's yeah. great to be here. Well, good. Swarm. What, what, where'd you get that name? Well, that's, uh, we wanted to try to align our team name with our team in Charlotte with the Hornets and there were oh. a number of names that were thrown out mm -hmm. there, the Swarm and the Sting and a couple others, but that certainly was the overwhelming choice back in December when we announced the team here in Greensboro. Well, I like it. I think <laughs> it's great. So tell us about this new league and, and when does it get started here in Greensboro? Yes, so we open the season here mid-November. Uh, we're working on the D-League the, the schedule as, as we speak. Um, there are 22 teams in our league this year. We were the 20th. Brooklyn was the 21st and Chicago was the 22nd. So those are the teams you'll play? Yeah, I, we'll play most of those teams. Uh, the league does not have a perfect schedule at this point in time, but the league runs from mid-November until the end of April. So right now uh, there are uh, eight teams that have made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And pretty similar to the NBA schedule, the NBA starts a week or so earlier. Mm -hmm. But as you know, the NBA is finishing their season here in the next week or so. and then. The Hornets are jumping into the playoff run here in, in about two weeks, so right. pretty exciting. It is exciting. Why do you call it a developmental team? Well, we'll have a roster size of anywhere from 10 to 12 players, and um, there have been the statistic this past season was 38 percent of the players playing in our league have played on NBA rosters oh. uh, this past season. So. It's really the AAA of baseball, they call it, in a way. Um, we, we're trying to get those players ready to, to, to get going on the NBA side. And this is a dream for a lot of these players that may have been cut from NBA training camp rosters or have had to go overseas to play. But um, there's a lot of opportunity for players in our league to get to the next level. That's great. Will we see any of the Hornets here? So as an example, your first round pick, um, if, your first, if our first round pick is not getting as many minutes or he may have been injured, there's a great opportunity that you will see him back and forth. So he could play in Greensboro on a Friday night, get back in his car, drive to Charlotte Friday night, be ready for Saturday night's game in Charlotte and maybe back here Sunday for practice. Oh, oh so there'll be a, the interstate will be pretty uh, uh, crazy on 85 North and South. So we can watch for the swarm and Absolutely. the hornets. <laughs> yeah. So how do we get tickets to these games? So right now we just started collecting uh, season ticket deposits and we've converted those season ticket holders. And um, it, it's interesting, you can go to gsoswarm.com and there'll be a plethora of information based on putting deposits down. We're actually seating people as we speak and uh, our schedule will come out, the first eight or cent, ten games will come out sometime this, this June, and the full schedule will be released sometime this September. So are we going to get to see Michael Jordan here? You know, that's a really good question. <laughs> we are talking about what that plan would be, and I know that Michael was very involved with the Hornets organization, and his brand itself is so incredibly strong. You saw him on TV last night yeah. uh, watching the, 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 the Final Four game. but. Uh, I, I think at some point he, he owns the team, so uh, we're going to see, see how we can get him engaged here He's in Greensboro. Welcome. He's, no He's welcome to come. What, what is exciting about this opportunity to you? Because you've been in the business for a while. I have. Um, it's coming to a, a market that is rich in basketball tradition. Uh, we were just talking out fr front with the uh, coach of the women's team here. Um, Oklahoma, great women's basketball programs, but that's really a football state. Um, here, it seems to be more diversified in, uh, you know, Tobacco Road and how many colleges, universities within a, an hour or so radius um, of the local colleges, the regional colleges, and the national colleges. So uh, that plus uh, the ability to grow the Hornets brand here in this market is pretty, uh, is pretty incredible for us. Uh, people know who we are. 
Yeah. Uh, you may go to the markets and people may not know who we are, but um, uh, it's just a great basketball tradition market. People are excited, not just boys and girls, but there's a diverse group of basketball fans out there. So in playing in front of 2,100 people a game, hopefully we're going to get that place packed uh, night in and night out at the field house. I think you will. And once again, tell our viewers how they can get tickets. You can go to gsoswarm.com or you can call 336-907-3600 um, for ticket information. Okay, all right, well that sounds wonderful. We're very glad to have the Swarm in Greensboro. And as you said, we've got huge basketball fans all over this area that would love to come to your games. No question, we're excited, we're excited about, about everybody and we look forward to seeing everybody here in November. Okay, all right, and when you get your roster together, come back and tell us about it. Definitely tell us who's so. playing on the team. Thank you, Sonia. I have a tall son, he might play. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Good you, to see you. you Thank too. you very much. Well, that's our show for today. I'm glad you were with us. Now, you can watch us each Monday at 5.30 p.m. on Time Warner Cable Channel 69. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media. Like us on Facebook at Triad Perspectives. And we're on Twitter and Instagram at Triad Perspectives underscore, underscore N-C-A-T-J-O-M-C. And you can watch this and all of our shows on our YouTube channel by searching NC Aggie TV. And we'd love to hear from you, by the way. What do you like? What don't you like? What kind of things would you like to see on Triad Perspectives? We'll take your suggestions on our website. Just type blogs.ncat.edu slash TV studio. A very special thanks to our guests today, and thank you for watching us. I'm Sandra Hughes. You have a great evening. Okay. Stay right there, and you and I will.